Hey everyone, Schnauz and I are very excited to finally be doing another more academic video. I've been wanting to make this video for a little over a year now. Uh, it's about the writing process and that's something I'm very passionate about and definitely has a lot to do with my class. And keep in mind some of this will be glossing over some of what we've gone through with the traits of good writing simply because they correspond with each other so well. So if I'm repeating myself, I am so sorry. Uh, but I really wanted to go over the writing process. Um, I wanted to talk to you guys about something real quick just because this happens very often and this is where I was at m in my mindset when I was your age. I didn't like writing. I felt like it was forced upon me. You must do this chore and you must do it this way. And I, my mind rebelled from it. Of course I did it because I was that student, but I didn't want to. And I think that really hurts people. I want my students to really want to be able to have that creative autonomy. I want you to feel like you have a choice in your writing. I don't want it to feel like I'm forcing this horrible thing upon you. You guys are the artists here, and I want you to be able to master your craft. So I'm giving you guys these guidelines. These are the proper techniques for the writing process. Writing is a very needed skill. There are many occupations that will require you to write. I can't think of one at this time that will not need some form of writing to say, hey, I want this, hey, I need this. And I want you guys to be prepared when you guys have that coming at you. So. I'm going to be talking to you guys about the writing process, and if you are wondering, yes, the writing process is the process in which you write, and in fact, don't even write that down, because there it is. So the writing process has five steps, and let's go ahead and go through those. The writing process consists of pre-writing, drafting, revision, editing, and publishing. Let's go ahead and talk about pre-writing first. For pre-writing, the whole goal of that is to get thoughts down on paper. Your goal should be going from point A, not having anything, to point B, having this lovely paper. You can have really good ideas, but as a human, we tend to forget them. If you get them written down by some format, you have it there, and it's something you can reference later. There are a lot of different ways you guys can show pre-writing. What works for me might not work for you. What works for you might not work for me. And that's, again, where I want you guys to master your craft. Find out what do you really like, what do you dislike, and then go with what works for you. Find your strengths. The way that I show pre-writing is free writing. I just keep writing until I have my thoughts in some kind of blurred format. I'm writing in the margins, I'm starring, I'm drawing arrows, it looks very messy. And that's okay, as long as you have your thoughts down, you're good. Some other ways that some other writers might enjoy showing that pre-writing are outlining, charting or graphing, mind mapping and clustering, drawing, or listing and showing bullet points. So again, you don't need to show many different forms of pre-writing, just choose one and find what works for you. I will let you guys in on something though. I feel like as students, or when I was uh, a student, I was forced to do outlining where it was like Roman numeral one, number one, A, B, C, Roman, or two, A, B, C. Like you had to break down each paragraph with a letter and then you needed their supporting details. That's really good for like beginning, beginning writers and Again, I just, I didn't like that at all when I was your age because I felt like it was so structured, it was so forced. And so again, find what works for you. You guys are at the age where you guys can show and demonstrate pre-writing in different ways. Find what works for you. The second step of the writing process is drafting. A lot of people think drafting, you do it and then you're good. And that's just not the case. What you wanna do is write out everything that you've had in your pre-writing. If you did bullet points, Maybe each bullet point is a sentence. Maybe each bullet point is a main idea that can be constructed into a whole paragraph on its own. The whole goal is to write out your pre-writing in that paper format, well, it, whether it's MLA or you're just getting it written down in some kind of paper format like paragraphing. The main thing that you need to keep in mind with your drafting part of the writing process is don't stop writing. You shouldn't be worrying about errors. You shouldn't be worrying about your thought process. Okay, you should just be getting it all out. Okay, so step three and step four are where people start to fall off the bus a little bit, okay? 
Step three of the writing process is revision. And I always remember vision specifically because you're looking at the vision of what your paper is about. What's the message? What's the whole point of writing this? And don't say to turn it in for a grade, that's terrible. What you guys want to do is really stop and check the clarity. Does it flow properly? And I'm gonna let you guys know something. If you do not do your revision first, you're going to end up having a really difficult time later in the writing process when you're suddenly having to redo steps because you didn't do revision properly. Here's an example. While I've been writing my novel, there was this part where I have these characters and they're in a tavern and there's this part where this character says something and it causes these two other characters, they've been taking a drink, and then they spit it out comedically uh, as this event that's taking place. While I was revising, I was rereading to check for clarity and the vision and does it all make sense? Can I imagine this? And I realized that I had never actually had my characters get a drink. Like they don't, they didn't have anything with them to make that happen. So I had to go back and fix that to where they did bring drinks to the table. They did have them. So whenever they did have that moment where something caught them off guard and they spat whatever they were drinking across the table, at each other for that comedic effect, it made sense because I had made sure that they had gotten those drinks. If I hadn't, another reader might have said, where did these come from? Like it came out of nowhere. And the reader doesn't like that, so you want to prevent your reader from again that confusion. Revision is what helps with that. Step four of the writing process is editing. This is probably the most disliked part because this is where you need to think about that prescriptive language. What are the rules of grammar? Are you checking your spelling? Are you checking your punctuation? Are you checking all the grammatical portions of this paper? And it can be very tedious, but this is what people tend to jump to when they're thinking, oh, I need to fix my paper, and they skip over a revision. If you start to do your grammar first and that whole editing, and you skip over a revision, what can happen is that you suddenly have a moment like how I did where it's like, oh, I have to go back and write this part in, but then you have to reread that and then you have to also do your editing again. So if you do your revision first, you have everything written already, then you just have to go through and do your editing one time and that saves you a lot of time and uh, quite frankly, a lot of frustration, I would know. The last part or the last step of the writing process is publishing and all that we're going to do in my class for publishing uh, kind of when we talk about presentation and those traits of good writing um, you guys will simply share your document with me and that will be your way you are finishing a piece and sharing it with me uh, if you are interested in ever publishing something else self-publishing is a really easy way to just get something out there most people can do that very easily and for a reasonable price if you are one of those people who wants to become a very well-known author you can still get it published but you would need someone to be your agent and they can really help distribute that information and get your book hyped up and really help you with those selling points before actually getting it published so it's however you want to I guess display your craft uh, but for my class we're simply just going to be sharing that with me that's all I have for you guys make sure you're taking a look at those notes and filling out those answers and don't be afraid to learn bye guys